so let's start that should be probably the last complaint about in this course of not having time i hope <laughs> because i really didn't want this to become a course with a lot of burden every day and i hope it didn't turn out to be that you got enough time to read and do the do a few problems that will make you go to text again that's all okay so in oracle so today what i'll talk about will be focused on oracle uh i'm sorry for you two guys right now but just whatever you learn would be useful you don't know when you get a job a month down the road would it be you won't be able to choose that no let's migrate to oracle or migrate to open base that may be huh in my case the job might be with open base so oh <laughs> and okay then i'll i'll really sit with you uh, after the class let's try to let's try to explore more about open base then if that that will be so critical okay so in oracle there are two types of optimizers one are one is rule based and one is cost based and the when you use a rule based optimizer uh it it has predefined set of hierarchy and it is going to use those um conditions to decide what query it is going to use while in cost base it is going to pick up a plan according to least cost of getting where you want to be okay so by default if you don't specify anything the rule base gets invoked because oracle knows about it oracle knows what to do and everything is well defined in cost based you yourself invoke it either by analyzing certain tables that i'll tell you what it does or you ask it you actually tell it make it a cost based okay so all the syntax and everything i'll give printouts also and i'll i'll briefly discuss it here also okay so to start off you will be doing so you are at sql prompt you're going to do first you'll try to do this is so auto trace is what you are trying to turn on so you can trace what all is happening okay and if you hit an error here that it can't find the plan table or definition is not uh available that means you don't have this table defined so for every user space you have to have a plan table in which it will stuff all the data into okay so in oracle there is a file which is called uh ut utilexplan.sql so this all this file does is creates this schema for this plan table so we'll identify for you guys where because in your installation where it is ke kept so either we'll run it for you guys before the quiz so that this plan already exists or we'll even tell you this is it and if you hit that error then source this file and to create that table okay then if you want to turn on all the timing statistics then you say set timing on it's an expensive thing to do so you explicitly have to turn it on okay because then oracle has to keep track of all the time that has elapsed in every uh, everything that it has done Okay so this will give you a uh, timing at the end. And how much overhead is the timing mechanism itself imposing? I don't know how much overhead would it be. My and my 
feeling would be keeping track of everything. It is main main overhead is keeping track of when it started, when it ended. I think it could be pointers. It could be. We could actually check it. I'm trying to think how would you check it though. <laughs> you have to turn the how how would we check it? The overhead that <laughs> the overhead that. <laughs> yeah. There is no physical overhead on it, but then again, you have to keep like a pointer to where you started, what process. That's the overhead that comes with it. And it may it may become important if if it is of the same scale as that your query is taking time for. Okay. So. Okay. Then for the cost based, you need to understand that to be able to do a cost based analysis is it is going to decide, okay, should I do a full scan of this thing? Or should I do an index scan or a range scan? What should I do? The way it has to it has to decide is that if your range scan, say I'm giving an example, say the range scan using that index is going to take you, say it involves 80% of the table. Okay? So it is much faster to do the full scan because then it doesn't have to look for index. Because already you need 80% of the table. So how will Oracle decide before going in that which of the two it should take? Is by analyzing the table. Okay? So then before you can invoke the cost based uh, cost analyzer is you have to have analyzed your table so it is analyze table then your table name for all compute Statistics for all columns. Is that on the far right side? Yeah. Compute, I should say. So once it has analyzed, now it knows the information about the table. And when it is doing the execution plan, it is looking at, okay, I will end up actually accessing 80% of the table anyways. So then it will pick up the full scan. Um, how does it analyze it and what's the cost of it? What's the cost of it? So to analyze it, it has to actually calculate all the rows that are in it. Okay, so it has to do a complete scan of the whole table. Keep the information about number of columns. Okay, so it is it is an expensive operation, depending on how big your table is. But it is it is almost like a full scan of everything. It keeps the statistics of information about amount of data and everything in it. So, if it's almost like a full scan, why are we doing a full scan? Exactly, because you can reuse it. You just have to analyze it once, and it keeps all this information in memory. That's why. And now it knows that this table has, say, 100 rows, out of which the query that you have sent in is going to use 80 rows. Oh, so the cost-based analysis is relative to the key. Exactly, oh, query. Oh, somehow I thought it was something. No, 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 that is, that is relative to it. It can tell it's going to use 80 rows before it does the query. Because it has to find out. That is how it will decide how, what type of index to use and all the execution plan. It tells you the cardinality. I'll show you an example. It tells you the cardinality of how many rows are being returned by each step also. So where is the SQL statement that you're, you're analyzing the table, mm -hmm. but that's with respect to some SQL statement you have? No, no, no. This is, this is a totally independent statement that you have given before you start doing your evaluation of your query. So it doesn't know you're no, at this time it doesn't. All it is going to do is, okay, let me just rephrase it if I confused you. When you did this, 
All it knows is what this table is about, all the statistics details of it. Okay? And then what it's going to do is, when you ran the query, is when it will say that, okay, is this table analyzed? Okay, if this table is analyzed, again, there is another problem now. Think of this. You analyze the table right now, and then you added more indexes to it. You didn't reanalyze it again, so it doesn't know about the new ones. So it is, it, when you are doing this kind of actually in-depth analysis, and whenever you change, try to do reanalysis whenever the time permits. Um, I was actually going to ask, on a, on a large system, Okay. Uh, if it did that scan, say this table, mm -hmm. and then it got this 80% request later, mm -hmm. how did the a priori analysis help it decide? So uh, it. Uh, what was. Then once you do this, will it not be used the index? Yeah, it, that is when it will. So you, you invoked a cost based uh, analyzer. Where you want to do cost based analysis, is this something you would just schedule, like analysis of the tables every night or something? That is, I, I don't know if you would do every night because schema doesn't change so often. It will happen only when schema changes. Okay, so it's right? not when your data changes? Again, you have to draw a line. I mean, if, if it changes by 5%, it may not make that much difference on what query plan you will use. It, it is, again, a subjective thing. But schema changes are very important, even if it is a smaller subset. Whenever you have a schema change, you should do a analysis. So it is aware of all the different indexes that are available. And so somehow it will know 80. Okay, just do them all. Whereas if you gave it 63, it says no, go by the index. It yeah. I think what I read in uh, Philip's article was that if uh, if anything that takes beyond 20% of the table as the returned result, do, uh, doing a full scan is more efficient. So Sorry, what was that percentage? 20%. And then I started looking at because I, I didn't understand how could you actually generalize this number as 20%. I mean, it is a very subjective thing. So I started looking into this, this book also. And they, they also mention approximately that area, but still you can't make a statement. They actually address this that you really can't say what, where exactly to cut off, but... Uh, it would seem to depend on the, the thing you're searching is indexed or not before you can make a general statement like that, right? It will depend on that and depending on how big the data set is relative to a smaller file scan would always be faster. So it is, but it is, it is discussed. I'll give you the printouts, excuse me, from that book also. I'll copy some, some parts. And uh, Philip's article is also quite, quite useful. Okay. Uh, so once you have analyzed this, and then you can do uh, run your query, whatever is the select you put in your query. So as an example, let me show you what comes out of. Okay. So one of the query examples that you will see. So it gives you how many recursive, recur recursive calls of your function were there. Okay, it'll tell you how many physical reads were there, and how many. And then it'll because you have turned the auto trace on, it is going to give you the output of the auto trace. Okay, and uh, as an example, your query, your oh. sorry. Any bytes were sent across the network. If you have a so it is a very powerful plan that if you have distributed uh, database or distributed data across uh, different servers, it will tell you that okay over the SQL dot uh, star net whatever is I think it is SQL dot star net or something is called for Oracle through the listener. Uh, it is going to send all the data across. That is what is the discretes. Okay. It is going to give you it should physical reads. Mm -hmm. So this query had 2,223 square uh, physical reads with only uh, I don't know how many 33 rows were returned out of this. And 
so you'll start getting a very good feel and this exercise will actually make you start thinking about what a DBA has to take care of or when you're writing queries what it is actually ending up doing so so I'll write the output just briefly the first line I'll write down so that you know how it will look and when you'll have the printout you will know I don't want to write the whole explain plan so the way it is organized is so you will get something like execution plan and what this execution plan this this actually will be displayed to you you can save it and print it out it will show you it will go line by line how it broke the whole query okay and then it will say so so the first one i'll tell you so it says zero then select statement and optimizer equal to choose bytes 27234 okay and then there is so you will see that these lines will be cascaded along like this okay it broke the query and then when you'll see the printout you will see that these lines are cascaded along so whichever is the inside one this is I'm explaining the syntax of understanding what the whole thing will mean okay whichever is the most inside in the printout that you will see or is the first thing that it executed and if you see on the same level the topmost is the first one that it, it followed and for every thing that it will do it will write what was returned so now this is the last one say okay this is in this plan select is the statement that is the outmost here okay so this was done in the end so you can see what it did was it is telling you everything in terms of you let the your query let the oracle choose the optimizer you didn't specify whether it was going to be rule based or cost based okay and the cardinality that means you got 33 rows back after doing the final select and these are the total bytes you got okay so when you see so you'll come to know okay so this is the first row the second row is going to be something like four say two five three whatever numbers so these numbers tell you what is the parent of this line okay this line's parent is this so this is what will it will be followed by so you'll see two lines of numbers and followed by the breakup of every line <clears throat> i really couldn't find a good like concise statement to explain how to read and explain plan I'll see if we have the Oracle manual has it. It is once you get used to reading it, it becomes very intuitive. That how it becomes much faster. Especially you'll be doing this over and over again to find out uh, everything. So I'll try to. But at the first glance, you can understand this. The moment you see this, you know what is the sequence in which uh, things were interpreted and what is being returned there. This is where it is telling you what optimizer was taken. Just to make sure I understand mm -hmm. the, the parent idea, we've said that row two and four are the innermost, so those will be the first two that occur, that are executed. Two will be executed before four because it's above four, two, so two, the yeah. parent huh? of four mm -hmm. should be two? No, no, no. It is not a parent is not in terms of how it is being executed. It is how it was broken up. Okay. So when when it is going to go for uh, let me tell you when it goes for this row right so its parent is 5 so 5 should be actually I, I should actually give you the exact numbers otherwise we'll get this this has to match with this this has to match with this let me tell you then 
So let's break it up and give you the exact. So there is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the parent is 0, then 1, 2, 3, 2. And then we have so 0, and then you have a sort here so select as outermost then sort and then filter is here then table index and then here is the index okay so this this is what it is that you got. So now let us look at <coughs> this line index. Excuse me? It's a filter. So it is basically these, it is the, it has broken up this query into the way it is going to understand. So right now what we want to understand is the parent key relationship. That's what I'm going to focus on your question. So now let us look at, so this is going to be our first one, right? So that means the parent of this should be this, because the next this is going to get evaluated. Right? So the parent is 3 for this. OK? What is going to go for after this is, yeah, so then it is going to be this. Because now these two will have parent 2. Oh, OK. Yeah. If we're going to spend a bit of time with it, Oh, that would be great. I'm sorry. I actually, why don't we just uh, copy this one? Okay. Yeah. But this this is clear now. So, yeah. so it's not the one that occurs directly before, but it's the level. It yeah, it is before. because it is the parent level. Right. But once once the level change, then it is just before it. Okay. So this will help you read the execution plan better. So, so okay. So I'm, I'm still a bit confused. With yeah. Here. Okay. So the parent is basically says that number is basically the number of indentations. No, no, not indentation. So see. But, but in this case, it would be, it is. But that's a coincidence. Say it again. Like basically, three means it's three, three. Places to the right, right? <coughs> the, oh, the, 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 the this is just by that's just by coincidence. Just by chance. This is just because I don't know how else to write it otherwise. This could be the tenth row. It doesn't matter. No, no, no I see it could be a different row, but but for example, the twos, right? They're both okay. I'm, I'm still a bit confused. What if, if if that's not the case? Then I'm not sure what parent. In other words, he's asking what's the significance of the indentation. It's an execution tree. Where, if, for example, filter was the most indented, that would be the first one to be done. That's that all. That would be the first one to be done, Sorry. and then maybe n would be Thank the next you. most indented. And so the parent of row two would be row four because yeah, it was the next level. Just told me the order that should be it's telling you the, the, the first guy to be executed on the level above it. Well, that's so not necessary. <laughs> right, because there could be multiple ones on that level. And it only, in, in this case, uh, row three and five are both on the same level. Yep. And so they have the same parent. Yep. Even though, you know, even though three occurs before five, we don't put three as the parent of five because three is on the same level. We talk about the parent being the level above those, which would be in this case filter, because it's the next level above it. So in order to so do the filter, the optimizer said, okay, I need to do a table and an index. Exactly. And so that's rows three and five. And then it looked at table and said, okay, in order to do the table, I have to do an index, and that's row four. And do I, I see that, but so is there any information in those numbers which are not 
contained in the indentation? Indentation is presentation. You, this could be all filter here. I, I understand. That. No, this is just. I'm just saying, if I take the indentation, mm -hmm. I can construct my. Yeah, it is. The numbers in my second column. Exactly. So there's no additional information in this. No, column. no additional information, no. Okay. Why yeah, because you can actually find out which will happen before the other one. Yes. Will, can you find out which will happen? Yeah, so two will, this two will happen before this two. So somehow that's yeah. redundant information. Yeah. Just yeah. But if, if this whole query was written like this, I'm telling you it will be so difficult to read with 100 lines. It is very easy to read a plan when it is indented well. No, no, I, I see that, but I'm just saying, in addition to that, but then you do the numbers, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure that doesn't give any info additional information. So I have my last question. Right now you're not feeling that it is not, when the, when the plan becomes very long, <coughs> you see that both of them work together. Problems. It, uh, you can see both of them, yeah, it, both of them become very helpful. Because otherwise if you want to see, suppose there was no number like this, and you wanted to see, okay, let me find everything in this level. So you'll start matching those things. Now right now you can just go, okay, let me pick up the first two out of these hundred. And I can just come here. So in long, long queries it becomes very, very helpful. Say it again. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Absolutely. So the cost, was that the number of uh, disk reads? No, 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 no. Cost is totally different. Cost is an internal measure. And I'll give you a printout. It is. It depends for everything. It is a different way. It is, uh, it is an abstract number that is calculated by Oracle. I'll give you that. They're like formula, small formula for it. It just, it goes into DB, DB tables or some table to calculate these these numbers. Okay. okay. So let me give the next part is how to actually give hints to Oracle, which is very useful. Is once you know that okay. I am most interested in getting the first row that is returned by this whole query. Not all the rows are, so they are called hints. So the syntax for hints is, you can say select and this is underscore. and then your query. Okay, so what you are telling is by this, this is a comment. Okay, while this is a hint. Okay, so now you are telling Oracle that pick up the execution plan in which the first row is returned the fastest because I am interested in first row. Will it still return all the rows? It will return, but it will pick up the, the, because it has to finish the query that you have given. Okay. okay, you could be writing a cursor in which you'll just pick up only the first row, whatever is the, the reason to do it. Right. Okay, but it gives you a, a reason, uh, a way to actually pick up the query that, okay, the first one when you find it, okay, is what is I'm most interested in. So it may be that by whatever execution plan it takes, that the rest, it may take much more time to go with the same way, but the first one is returned very fast and you just are interested in that. Okay. Then second one is another switch is so, 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 okay, so uh -huh. when you say first row, uh -huh. how are they stored in No, so there is a result set. For whatever query you put in, there are say fifty rows to be returned. Yeah. Okay. You are interested only in the first one. But how is that? Which one is the first row? So in, in some way they must be ordered. Whichever row is returned to you first. Maybe the first one that was inserted. Yeah, but most likely I won't know that, right? I won't no. just in the SQL query itself. In, in the table there is some, de some order, not even order. There is some sequence. But the query runs, it will return some of the rows. 
sum rho as the very first row. Mm -hmm. So this optimizer will be the task. Because there's a default sorting someplace? No, no, not sorting. It's it could be just order. order. Not even, I don't want to even use the word order. If I say select star mm -hmm. from, from some database, yeah. and then sort the order. So what is the default order? The first row. First row, it could be you could have inserted any any data no, in the but, but, but it's not the first row I inserted, right? Most likely. It's some first row. You, you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. You have no idea what no. If I have, okay, I so yeah. Okay, it could be your so I'm not sure why if I don't know what is the first row, why is that a help? Okay, if suppose you are if that <laughs> no. If if this table is indexed. Okay, and you want only the first one. Then, if, if it is indexed, if you know there is an order in that table, okay, you just want the first name that comes out. So, what is normally order? If, uh, if, if you are searching on. I'm just asking the wrong question. Well, if you no. care about it, you should ask it for an order. Otherwise, you take what you get. All right, so I'm just saying I want something back. Mm -hmm. No, the, so you are going to get 50 rows, okay? All suppose you are interested in finding out is okay. Let us take an example. Uh, if any row is, I don't know if this will clarify everything, but I'm just thinking right now. If I know that any row will be returned, I do something. Okay, so I'm interested in finding out, let me get me the first row. If I don't get a first row, I know there's nothing being returned. Okay, just I'm interested in finding the first row that satisfies this thing. Okay. okay, I don't care. So what you end up doing is you are forcing it to say, let me find just any row satisfying this. That is the execution plan I should find. Does that... No, I can see that if you're interested in anything, yes. Just, I'm, I'm trying, this is just an example I'm trying to think to clarify. It may be a wrong thing to do, but all I want to clarify is that it is giving you a choice to control what you asked. How do you actually tell Oracle what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. So these are a set of switches that you say that, okay, another switch is cache it or not. Cache this query. If you know that this, you, if you generate this page, you'll end up generating 10 different pages for this user. And each of these 10 subsequent pages will use the same query. So tell it to cache the query. So you can actually say cache it. I think that is cache, yeah, exactly. Cache or no cache, whichever way. No underscore or no, no cache. Either either we'll, we'll look in the book, no, not that one. I'll look in this book or we'll get into the manual, Oracle manual, and we'll, we'll make this thing as a list that you can use. Yeah. Okay, so we'll yeah. Okay. okay, so the first two things you're giving first rows and all rows. As you use these are different, different. These are two different things. Yeah. So what, when I do those two things, what do I see? What's the difference to me? Okay. So you are telling Oracle that of all the uh, execution plans that you are getting, my priority is that I just want to get the first row. Okay. So pick up the plan that makes it fastest to get the first row. Okay. And, the one, okay. and for all rows, you say, no, I want everything that satisfies this. So pick up a plan, whichever plan it picks up, so you optimize this. So all rows seem to be the default then, or? All rows could be default. I would think so. All rows could be default. All rows could be default. So is there some possibility you can use global settings then? So yeah. The purpose of the aura so there is aura, so I'll tell you it is, uh, I think aura <coughs> 8, dot SID, there is one file. Yeah. Do you remember this this file? Yeah. And no cache, for example, might be local overrides on a global setting. On your, yeah, on your, uh, so there is a default, actually there is that, that might be the answer for it. We can actually give, remind me to print this file out also. Let's pick up an instance of what we are running here and find out all the variables that go into this file.
Okay, I know the cache setting can be done in that. So it could be that that is where you set up your default for your instance of Oracle that you're running. <coughs> so every time you will shut down your database and restart is when it is going to read all those defaults. And when you change it, you'll have to shut down your data database and restart the database. Okay. Then, so be very careful of missing out this plus, because then it is a comment for Oracle. Okay? The other is that you can actually force it to do a full table scan and give the table name here. So you are forcing it that do a full table scan. Suppose you look at the execution, okay? And you see that I'm going to use 80% of this table anyways. Why don't I force it? Okay? But be very careful that the syntax requires that if in your query, remember we can do like an alias of employees E, right? And so you have to put here alias, otherwise it will not work. This is very important thing to remember. Okay? If you use an alias, you have to specify. Yeah, you specify the alias. And this is a syntax thing for Oracle. Okay? I'm trying to think if there is any other other thing that could be wrong in syntax that won't let you use it. So another another thing is just try to think when you force something like a table scan that you end up in your execution plan, you should end up seeing the full table scan written in that. So that yes, your hint was taken up. Okay, just as a test when you are doing it. Make sure that you're, you didn't make like a syntax mistake here, that it didn't use your hint. Okay. Please, 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 give your zigzag, please, exact same output. The output is the same for all these queries. Output. Output, oh, yeah, yeah. Output yeah. is, uh, the plan would change. The output is exactly the same. The order isn't changing. Order. Of the rows. The sorted. In the relation you get back. Oh, no, that, that is not. No. Because you're not modifying your query. All you are doing is you are telling it which, you are guiding it to pick up the execution plan. I think that's all, that should do it.